And welcome back to the English Shooting Stream. I'm Gary. I'll be your host for this evening. Callum has left the building. This is Gary from English Shooting tonight. A few of you will get where that's from, certainly if you're in the UK uh, shooting Discord. But I hope you're all doing well. I hope you've all had a fantastic week. If you're new to the stream, then it's an opportunity to ask any questions about UK shooting, getting into the sport, and of course, the main sort of theme for this evening is going to be sort of going right back to basics how you can get shooting here within the UK in 2021. I know there's a lot of people waiting uh, to get into the sport, a lot of people waiting to get their licenses so we're going to talk a little bit about that and how Covid is obviously affecting things as well. We're going to be talking about also Basque of course, can't be a live stream if we're not talking uh, about Basque and their suggested responses to the firearm safety consultation and I've got a whole host of uh, other things including 
the announcement for the giveaway of the UK shooting Discord. So there's a, a bit of swag to win. Uh, the entry is already closed, so don't go looking for it. I've already got the names, and we'll be picking that random uh, later on in the stream but of course again if you are new you have a chat box you can ask any questions you want and I will do my best to get through them all uh, but yeah how thing how are things going let me know if you've been shooting this week if you've been or shooing as the uh, thumbnail earlier did say thank you very much Outdoor Technica it was Arius from Outdoor Technica that brought my attention to that and then a flood of uh, other messages smart I do not claim to be uh, and spelling is certainly one of my weaknesses why can't why things can't be numbers based throughout like binary why can't we just spell in binary there's no no dyslexia going on on there is there uh, but anyway um, Chris Lewis asking about Magload of, of course we'll be talking about Magload later there are a number of new products that have been released and that are going to be released I promise you Connors I try and won't give away uh, any uh, spoilers uh, but there's lots of stuff going on in the background at Magload but straight away into a Magload question when is Magload going to make a BAD lever um, oh evening by the way so hi Chris thanks for uh, for joining well, there's a meme that I shared recently about the bad lever. It's all in the name. It's bad. I, I, of course, when I first got into shooting, I went for it. It seems to be like one of the main, uh, one of the main accessories that you seem to put on an AR. But loads of people have had uh, issues with them. Certainly, if you have the 1522, it's not designed in any way, shape, or form to work with the 1522 so uh, you either have to end up taking a, a big chunk out of the uh, receiver uh, or you end up having to bend it and it never quite functions uh, correctly uh, because you're putting that extra weight on that bolt catch it just in introduces just a little bit more uh, sort of unreliability so for a competition gun um, I would suggest going for something you know if, if ambidextrous really is that important going for a specifically made ambi uh, upper and lower receiver set so the uh, the battle arms so there was a, a video that was put out on the channel uh, a few months ago now uh, hands down sort of one of the best rifles that i've managed to shoot in the uk 22 ar and everything was ambidextrous on it and the uh, the ambidextrous bolt release was was uh, like sort of replaced on the other side it was almost symmetrical uh, so I don't know if if Connor shares my views on the uh, the bad lever of course if you guys want it no Connor's won't make it Connor's only seems to make stuff that he feels is sort of needed um, but yeah I, I know I've probably pissed off uh, about half a dozen people well, probably two dozen people um, bad mouthing the bad lever uh, but yeah, they are popular. I've just never really got on with them. Just move faster, get more familiar uh, with your rifle. Uh, Kyle, leave the lights off. What do you mean, leave the lights off? I like it a bit dark and moody. It's just a bit, it's a bit cooler, right? This is what they all do. All the streamers, you have it in pretty much complete darkness. Or my um, my Mac is wearing away. So something that I haven't said. Of course, I'm trying to improve the stream every single week. Uh, very kindly being lent. A, a cam link again from uh, Outdoor Technica and obviously it's doing a lot more rendering a lot more processing in the background so it's uh, I, my Mac may spontaneously burst into flames uh, so if we go down you probably know why uh, but let me know how it sounds let me know how it looks any issues throughout the stream let me know and I'll, I'll try my best to to fix them uh, Ashley evening everyone hope all is well hope you're well Gary I'm very well thank you uh, been trying to join a club since last year, but COVID had stopped me from that as no one around here is taking new members, not giving up yet. Please don't give up. So, of course, we were going to, well, this evening was going to be all about getting into shooting. So I know a lot of you, a lot of familiar names, a lot of familiar uh, usernames, certainly, <laughs> and faces. So a lot of you, this isn't going to apply, but I started this channel to get people into the sport to help people get into the sport and sort of make things a bit clearer so i thought let's bring it back to basics is covid going to stop you from starting shooting within the uk this year absolutely not and um, when i say get shooting i don't necessarily mean going and getting your fac going and buy your buying 
going and buying your first rifle and heading down to the range. Anything with a trigger is, is a gun. Anything that you can pull a trigger and fire a projectile at is shooting. There are loads of things that you could be doing to familiarize yourself with certain guns, with certain training techniques, and there's loads of amazing simulators and tools. Stuff like the Mantis X, which will work on a plethora of different platforms, both for dry fire training and live fire training. So if you've if you've already got guns and you're yeah, you'll miss you'll get in that itch you want to get out you want to familiarize yourself or keep your skills up with your gun get something like the mantis uh, x or the mantis 10x as i know there's two different versions uh from what i've heard i've only used the more expensive one uh, but the person that supplied it bought the cheaper one ended up sending it back and got the the more expensive one so from that i would just say go for the most expensive one straight away you get so much more uh, functionality with it you can then train stuff like your time to first shot making sure that your uh, your trigger squeeze is consistent you're not snagging it you're not pulling to the gun or you know anticipating recoil i know technically while dry firing uh, dry firing anticipating recoil or it can't be a thing uh, there's a number of videos that completely dispel that so you can do a lot of training if you've already got the guns, put it on your shotgun, rifle, pistol. But also if you're starting out, I can highly recommend getting into uh, Action Air. So there's a lot of replica, uh, replica guns that are pretty much one for one like the live fire versions. And you can do a lot of training with them. You can start doing mag changes. Again, you can get your, your trigger dis discipline and trigger control in there. You can again familiarize yourself with all of the different controls and again shooting is, and is shooting the you can take skills from one discipline to another and transfer them fairly easily and there was the the lockdown uh, range that I built out in the garden I made that video saying like look you can do this in pretty much any garden there's just a few things to bear in mind like do you have a footpath near your house are you away from a road are you firing in a safe direction if you miss your target is that pellet going to be captured and remain within your property so there's lots of stuff you can do without buying or having a live fire gun but of course most people want to progress and go into their their fac and get that and there's a lot of things that you could be doing right now to help yourself out of course the number one golden sort of pathway to getting your firearm certificate and shotgun certificate within the uk is of course joining a club and i know ashley what you were saying that yours isn't currently taking new members that is unfortunate but there's so many people that get in contact asking where can i start where can i go who do i just find a club they, they haven't even started looking for a club yet find a club get in contact with them even if they're not taking new members ask them questions what facilities do they have how often do they meet uh, are you going to be able to use the range or is it every you know full moon that you're going to be able to do it uh, talk to the members ask if there's any members about that you can talk to over facebook you can get in touch and ask them about their experiences and again places like the uk shooting discord like the english shooting facebook group there's loads of shooting groups about go in there and start asking questions you can at least during this period identify a club that you're going to want to join of course then go and join it i believe i might be wrong in this but i did see david was here thanks david for uh, for joining but i believe kfc is open uh, so they are well they're not open and necessarily shooting but they are open for membership so get if you want a club and you want to start that ball rolling and you're within the south they do have members up and down the country of course to become a full member you're going to have to attend regularly but join a club like kfc there's look at the nra website you can find loads of club lists on there and the areas that they're that you're that they are in the nsra they have a whole plethora of different uh, clubs affiliated clubs across the country so again you can find your your club get in contact with them get everything even if you can't put that member you know, application in nothing stopping you from filling it out nothing stopping you from having the payments out there ready to go still lots you can be doing to have all this paperwork then if you are in the fortunate position where you are already 
a full member and you were looking to apply for your FAC, well, there's been some news and developments about that. It does depend what county you're currently in. Some are doing virtual visits. They're doing virtual sort of FEO calls um, and ascertaining or doing everything they would usually do face-to-face -face via uh, sort of online. So if you're in one of those counties, just because we might be under lockdown, it does seem that, uh, that a lot of counties are still processing applications. Of course, if they're shut, then you're not going to be able to submit. But still, there's lots you could be doing in the background. You could be filling in your application form, going and getting your references, going and, get your, going and getting your uh, your medical uh, certificate, going get your go and get that. Uh, medical form filled out by your doctor. Doctors are, of course, still open and you can have every, everything lined up. Getting the medical certificate or medical form filled out, be careful with that because there might be a sort of time period where it's valid. So check with your local firearms licensing department, see how long it is. If they go, right, we we'll accept anything within three months, do it now. Have that sat waiting. So don't wait until lockdown is lifted and the clubs are reopened go and do absolutely everything you can now be proactive about it and be ready that's exactly what i did over the last lockdown had well i thought i had all of my uh, uh sort of ducks in a line found out that i completely balls it up with a medical uh form uh so learn from my from my lesson and you know have everything ready there again i've got a few videos on the whole process on that uh, you can go and check that out. The next video to come out in that series is actually filling out the application form. So that should be hopefully some good advice coming out in a video very, very soon. Uh, then if you've got your firearm certificate and you're sat there going, can I, can't I, what can I do? Well, it has been clarified that shooting is a form of exercise. You are allowed to go out and exercise, I think it's once a day. The only caveats at the moment of that, it has to be local, you can only do it uh, with yourself or ideally on your own or a max of one other person from outside your household or bubble or of course with people uh, within your household or within inside your support bubble. So if you are lucky enough to have a bit of land that you can go and use, uh, a bit you know, a range, outdoor range that you can go and use that is open, then recreational shooting is allowed. Of course, rough shooting um, is, is allowed as well. So if you want to go stalking, you want to go hunting, want to go and get some rabbits, you can do all of that. So still lots that we can be doing i don't think necessarily you have to lock yourself inside and and say well that's this sort of shooting season finished you can still go out even if that's in your back garden or if you go and find uh, a bit of land that you might have permission for to, to go and shoot there so again if you have any questions i really wanted to sort of put the flare up uh, that this evening was more about any questions about getting into shooting, getting your application in. So any of those sorts of questions you have, please fire away. I will try and do my absolute best to, to answer uh, as soon as possible. Uh, Chris Lewis, any whispers on shortages of supply of the 1522 in the UK? Uh, as as Daniel Smerald, thanks Dan for joining, says it's coming. Uh, mark my words, it's coming. We've seen it many times before. I think I've said it in every single live stream for the last couple of weeks. We tend to be a few months behind any shortage in the US. Yes, all of this year the US has been you know, absolutely sort of rampant with with gun buying and ammo buying it still is incredibly hard to go out there and buy a new gun and buy a spy ammo um for for god's sake and they're one of the biggest manufacturers and exporters of that so if they're having shortages it it takes a while for us to to experience that at the end of the day we can't go out and panic buy ammunition we have limits so the silver lining of that is shops stay in stock a lot longer so the the last time i saw a, a real big shortage here in the uk was after sandy hook but all throughout the sort of the pandemonium in, in the gun scene around that era we could still buy loads of um 22 i know 22 was the first to get really hit in the us around that period we were still buying five ten thousand rounds quite happily for the club it wasn't until maybe six months later, which unfortunately is when my FAC came through and I was waiting for, uh, waiting to go and buy a 1522 and they were, everywhere was completely out. And I remember I was almost like twice a week popping into Portsmouth Gun Centre 
like waiting for the the shipment to come in. I had you know I'd left my contact details with them, uh, and funnily enough, I happened to turn up one day as I was passing, dropped in, and literally they were stacked up on the desk, having just been delivered so you didn't even have to book it into the system i took it straight out so absolutely there will be shortages if you ever see shortages in the us you will see shortages here for stuff like 22 and shotgun ammunition we are fairly well protected i know i know again a few years ago around uh, around that shooting cci mini mag was incredibly hard to get hold of because it's an american ammunition and cci is pretty much what i exclusively shoot so that was a real shitter for me uh, but stuff like ely ely is manufactured here within the uk they're going to supply the uk market before they really start exporting so we should we should be okay for 2-2 at least and of course shotgun ammunition we have some of the world's best shotgun and cartridge manufacturers here within the uk we really shouldn't struggle for uh, shotgun ammunition actually something that i think is going to potentially cause uh, a shortage rather than the US is actually the EU and Brexit. We've seen that there are a load of countries being very very spiteful with the implementation and sort of the orchestration of Brexit and the new border checks and import and export and I think getting supplies into the UK. Uh, I can't remember which cartridge manufacturer it is but there was a main component that they were buying in from Europe now if the transportation and import and export is disrupted because of Brexit and you know what goes on over the next you know, six months then we may see you know they whilst we have some of the world's best manufacturers they might not have the materials or the parts to actually make the ammunition but we'll see it'll be interesting to actually get in contact with some of those uh, you know, manufacturers and see what they suspect to see what they are uh, anticipating but for 2.2 and shotgun cartridges i think we should be okay anything ammunition wise american ammunition or any american guns not like we have a huge uh, apart from you know hundred thousand match pair shotguns we don't have a huge firearms industry in terms of firearm manufacturing here so american guns like smith and wesson yes are most definitely going to um you know, dry up at, at some point even when the supply is plentiful out in the u.s it can be an absolute nightmare to get them in the uk we're a very very small market com certainly compared to the us and we fall down the priority list very very quickly we see it with vortex we see it with the 1522 we see it with ammunition so yeah it, it's something that we're just sort of used to by this point so when there's an actual shortage it doesn't tend to make a huge difference uh, if that makes any sense uh, but yeah there's there's just my uh my thoughts on it uh Stu had my fac application returned to me due to coronavirus staff shortages uh it was the seventh in queue for processing that absolutely sucks would have thought they could have put it on hold but i have to join the long way what i'm more worried about with them returning is like with thames and hampshire where you have to have this this medical form well if they return the application are you then going to have to go and get another medical form and if so who's paying for that uh because you know you've supplied everything again why they can't hold on to it why they can't just leave it sat there on the pile and of course why they can't actually be doing the job i know stay at home is it essential well you know having you know being able to buy guns it's pretty essential that you have a certificate right so in that way it's essential but we've we've moved into the the modern era now we have things like zoom and skype and you know remote conferencing why the firearms officers can't be up and down the country doing remote talks even if it's a case of they go through the full application they sit down and give you a, an interview but because of course they can't come out and in, inspect the property they can't inspect the safe and for for any american viewers or anyone that's not aware of our processes here for getting a license 
part of getting your firearm certificate is having a sit down with the police they will come to the house look at your security measures things like alarms where the windows are is there a lot of traffic are you in a flat are you in a house is your safe on the first or ground floor is it is it in a you know secluded area ideally they like the safes are safes either in attics or wardrobes or um cupboards just tucked away so if somebody like the gas meter man or the um, the electricity meter man or or man or woman uh, person uh, comes in and takes a reading they're not going to see a gun safe there so uh, they've got various criteria they also like to give the safe a good tug to make sure that it is bolted in place that it is secure and again it's not intended to be an outright stop they're not expecting you to build Fort Knox but it's about being a good enough deterrent and whilst they probably will admit that a targeted attack given enough time someone's going to get into the safe what they're more worried about is opportunist if you have just a run-of-the-mill burglar and they break in and they say see a gun safe they're not just going to pry it open or lift it off the wall and and bugger off with it. It's going to offer some resistance. You're going to have to make a bit of noise and spend some time trying to get into it, which should hopefully be enough of a deterrent. So all of that physical sort of assessment, they could just wait until after COVID. They could have your application there or your, your certificate sat there on the desk and then just go around people's houses have a quick sweep round, make sure the security pl- measures are in place, the safe's okay, and then hand you your, your certificate. They could be getting the bulk of the work done so that when we come out of COVID, when we come out of lockdown, it they should absolutely fly through applications. But no, that, that's far too efficient for the civil service. Uh, of course, they're, in my opinion, using a lot of excuses. Some counties seem to be doing an amazing job of keeping it running, and some are sort of like, oh, we don't technically have to. But of course, regardless of virtual and regardless of all these little workarounds that we could do to to keep things moving, at the end of the day, this is their profession, it's their job. COVID and lockdown doesn't affect people doing their jobs. You're still allowed to go out and work under lockdown. So again, why they can't be coming out and actually doing the, the application like normal, whilst of course it does expose them to a bit more, a bit more risk, uh, admittedly, as long as precautions are um, are taken, there sh- there shouldn't be an issue. So, yeah, we we'll we have to wait and see. Again, Hampshire, they've closed initial applications, but I've had absolutely no word that they're returning it. And yeah, I've been lazy again and forgotten. Of course, they are prioritising and still processing people's applications. That it's their vocation or their profession that is likely to be. Uh, affected and well I work full time in the gun trade so it sort of is my you know vocation and my profession I definitely need to drop them uh, an email and on that note well that sort of was that note uh, FAC update well you've, you've just heard it nothing's moved forward still don't they have the uh, the FAC we'll have to see uh, where that goes in in the long run hopefully COVID doesn't uh, stop it for much uh, for much longer Are there any questions uh any questions any topics you want to to talk about uh people saying thousand rounds of cci 22 lr is going for around 300 dollars in the us right now uh yeah it's still pretty fairly priced uh i mean uh, connor's and i with with magload of course we need ammunition to be able to go and test stuff so it's all well and good coming out with new products if you can't actually go out and test it you can't you can only get so far with it so we've sort of foreseen the this potential shortage um and are currently sitting on ten thousand rounds of of two two i think we paid um it was about what was dealer price but retail price i think it's it's about 85 90 pound a thousand here in the uk uh, and dealer price i don't know if i can give that information out so let's move on swiftly but uh three hundred dollars per thousand rounds of of cci two uh, LR. I, I hope that's mini mag at least. I don't think it makes it hugely better, but yeah, I've seen uh, like I think nine mil. It's just a given now that it's like a dollar a round, which is absolutely uh, insane. I've seen you know boxes of like fifty uh, fifty rounds of nine mil in the states going for well over a uh, hundred dollars. It's absolutely barking. Uh, and of course, the, the talking about our licensing with a firearm certificate you are restricted 
on what ammunition you can both hold onto and buy. So it's the it's the same limit. You say you've got 2,000, well, it means you can have in your possession 2,000 rounds of that particular ammunition at any one time. Uh, and it means that if you've got 500 at at home then you can only go and buy 1500 so it does limit whereas obviously in the us if you walk into to walmart or you walk into a gun shop and it's uh it's stacked there's nothing legally stopping you from taking uh, as well buying not taking uh, that's not going to go well uh, <laughs> buying as much ammunition as you want i've seen a lot of stores implementing uh implementing uh you know customer limits so you know a couple of boxes per customer customer uh, max so that might stem it so your little you know your mum and pop shops uh, they're they're gonna try and look after all of their their customers so yeah it's the hoarders out in the states that does it the people that are sat on a hundred thousand rounds ready for the apocalypse um but you know they've gone out and bought you know 300 dollar poverty pony uh so so yeah there's there, there's that uh mr e30 just a small donation thank you very much still much appreciated of course guys if you want to help the channel all the proceeds of the channel go back into the channel so it helps buy new cameras which i'm finally making the full use of the the sony uh, a37 uh, and i definitely need to pick up a cam link now so it looks all good i did have a little bit of issues uh, before the stream a little bit of a blind panic if you guys noticed I was about a minute late uh, that's because it wasn't connecting I don't know why it suddenly burst into life but it but it did um, and now my feed seems to I've got the spinning circle of death but I still still seem to be connected um, maybe am I is anybody there well let's carry on anyway I think it's the Wi-Fi if I give this a if I refresh it is it going to kill everything let's just try and bring up another tab uh but yeah oh no everything's burst back into life i can see your chats there you go because the thing is when i lose i've got it on different wi-fi so hopefully i don't lose both at the same time uh, but if i lose this one here i lose lose the chat pav 4517 nice name like that uh, i'm waiting for my ar-15 22 wmr from guncraft yep uh, i mean daniel highly rates his um and again We've talked about the Guncraft before. Rob, who runs it, has done a lot of finessing and tweaking uh, since that gun was released. So it's it's now running better than ever. Dan is really happy with him, uh, with his even. To be honest, if I'm going to be completely honest, I still don't get the, the huge hype of a 22 WMR. I know it's another uh, option. Uh, it's another uh you know caliber in two two semi auto well in semi automatic ARs so you can't go wrong with that really the more the better uh I would just stick to personally two two long rifle it's cheaper all of the competitions in two two accept it WMR still hasn't necessarily exploded onto the scene. Uh, Xbox One Geeks thank you very much uh, appreciate that um david kiddle how many rounds are you sitting on uh there we go three hundred thousand nine millimeter rounds that's right so any anyone watching from the us um so david kiddle who won, runs the american shooting trips uh company so we go out we come out to the states usually at least once a year uh loads of videos on the channel of my previous trips previous experiences 300,000 rounds of 9 mil. We have been telling him that's his retirement fund sat there right now. Uh, sod American shooting trips. Uh, sell, cash out, uh, and live uh, live comfortably. Uh, have a nice little retirement. Uh, for a certain fee, I may be able to disclose the location of that 300,000 rounds. Uh, I warn you, it's heavily armed. So uh, he who dares and, and all that. Uh, Mr. E30, can I ask this? I intend to buy... Uh, I intend on getting a Tika T3X TAC A1, but I'll be keep. Uh, I intend on getting a Tika TAC, but I'll be keeping it, never trading it, it in. But the gun dealer said I'd be best going for a custom barrel. Could you explain why? No, <laughs> I'm not um, particularly au fait with uh, long range shooting. Uh, I've I've shot the the T3X a, a, a few times that just might be their personal opinion sometimes you do have to be careful uh, with gun shops you know they will have a very specific opinion and will sometimes let that cloud 
what might be great for you they might think isn't good for them and therefore they they end up recommending to you what they think so um no i i can't uh, honestly i've I, i've never heard of getting a custom barrel for one of course you can get a custom barrel for pretty much anything uh, but it shoots amazingly out of the box anyway it's a great rifle get the base rifle see how it shoots if you see any ill effects or you think the accuracy could be better or it could be improved then maybe later down the line have a custom barrel made for it uh, Ezra Leon flood the market retire profit absolutely that's that's what we're all thinking David you're sat on an absolute mine uh, mind a gold mine there. I'm going to say minefield. That's, um, well, you know, they are explosives, I guess. Talking about uh, you don't need a license to shoot in the UK. Just join your local club. Uh, yeah, so back onto the subject of getting into shooting here within the UK. There are certain guns, of course, under Section 1 that you can't shoot. You can't even hold, technically, uh, unless it's under certain circumstances like, you know, it's safety or, that, or there's somebody's health at risk. Uh, without having it on your license uh two two mini rifle so any as the law stands they are currently uh trying to change this in uh from the firearm safety consultation they uh, are trying to uh, you know, change the caliber and the wording of this bit of legislation but basically as it stands at the moment the miniature rifle exemption you can go and shoot you can actually go and buy and shoot and buy the ammunition for any gun that's chambered up to 0.23 uh, they're trying to change that so it's just for 2.2 long rifle uh, i'm pretty sure they will be successful with that uh, but as it stands any gun up to a 0.23 caliber you don't need any license at all to to even own but certainly to go and shoot this is one of the main exemptions that i've been using over the past few years without uh, my own firearm and shotgun certificate anything up to a 0.23 you can you can fill your boots with again as long as it's safe health and safety always comes into it um don't don't be a knob end with it uh, and it is going to change so if you go out and buy a, a 2.2 semi-automatic well a 2.23 say bolt action under the miniature rifle exemption which is a bit sort of gray to begin with uh, certainly once they've changed it you will then be in possession of uh, an illegal firearm and they are of course removing the exemption that you can buy the gun and the ammunition they they're trying to get it so that you have to uh, have a, at least a firearm certificate to still be able to make use of that exemption but what it shouldn't affect is people using that exemption to shoot then for anything other than 0.23 or say 2.2 rimfire as it's going to become then joining a club is a good uh, valid reason to be able to shoot any club guns and what's really nice about the club exemption is that any club members that are there on the range at that shoot their personal guns apart from the long barrel pistols they're the ones with the long barrels and the rod out the end and section one shotguns that's any shotgun with a two plus or well, larger than two plus one capacity uh, or with a detachable magazine uh, anything other than those for private club members will become a club gun so if a, if your mate has a tricked out accuracy international in uh, 338 you can shoot that as a member of a club and also it doesn't matter if you're a probational member or you're a full member if you are a member of a club either full or, or probational any members guns and any guns that is owned by the club apart from the long barrel pistol and section one shotguns you can go and shoot so again i say all the time join a club that is always your first step if you want to get into shooting in the uk join a club get your membership in then you become a full member once you become a full member that's basically the vote of confidence from the club you can then go and apply for your firearm certificate of course another way to get into shooting which again i'll put my hands up and say i'm, I'm not too familiar with is the stalking is the hunting is the rough shooting route so if you have somebody who can mentor you if you have somebody that can take you out and show you the ropes and then will vouch for you during your application and say look you've known you know they they're obviously going to be known to the police and had licenses main you know it's a good chance for a fairly long time they can then 
uh, say, look, you've trusted me, you know me, and I'm vouching for this guy uh, on my head, be it if he goes and does something stupid and a mentorship is, a, is another route in. Of course, having your own land and needing it for pest control, they're not probably going to let you loose straight away with a 308, but they may give you, say, a 2-2 bolt action for some bunny bashing or squirrel bashing. And then after a year or so, you go, look, I've I've not annoyed anybody or, or hurt anybody with this. Can I get something a little bit bigger? So there are, of course, many different facets, many different ways into shooting. I'm coming at it from what I know, which is, of course, the sport shooting uh, route. So uh, Boogie, thank you very much. Uh, really enjoy your videos. You're 19 and shot a lot in cadets. Really enjoyed it. Uh, it I, and was decent at it that's always good that always helps with the enjoyment where do I start from scratch um, that's that's basically what I've just said you're about uh, I think about half an hour late how long have we been streaming for <laughs> little, about half an hour late uh, as as I've just said might have just you might have already just seen it join a club find a home office approved club and that's actually an important point a gun club here like an official gun club has been been sort of licensed and vetted and approved by the home office it's not terribly difficult to start your own club i believe you need a, mem a minimum of 10 members to be able to do that and you apply to the home office of course kentucky firearms club which is my main club here uh, in the uk uh, they they only started about five years ago they only started with a small group of people but they are home office approved so go and find a home office approved club there's a map within the uk shooting discord uh shall i uh, i haven't got the invite link someone someone put the invite link in the um in the, in the chat go and join that discord go and pop a question go and find the map uh it's growing and growing uh, over time so hopefully we'll have an extensive list of clubs and shops in there eventually but of course there is the uk nra they have a list of every affiliated club also the uk psa has the same the cpsa which is so uk psa is practical cpsa is clay pigeon shooting and the nsra which is small bore rifles they all on their websites you can go and find the list of clubs, go and find one local to you, inquire, join, fulfill your probational member, um, your member period, that will be anywhere between sort of three to six months. Once you're a full member, then you can, affl uh, you can apply. But starting from scratch, join a club. If you're not a full member of a Home Office approved club, that is the first step to do. And as I was saying at the beginning of the stream, in the meantime, if you want to brush up on your shooting skills, you're 19, so you can go and buy an air gun, you can go and buy a BB gun, get training at home, get your, you know, get familiar again with shooting at a target. I still enjoy air rifle shooting, it's the only shooting that, or the only guns that I can legally own, unfortunately, but um, I, I still enjoy it. And I, I've said before, you know, my, I do, I, the air rifle is, is within reach but of course with with youtube rules i can't actually touch it on screen because i don't know the, the world might implode so um actually um i'm not touching youtube youtube i promise i'm not touching it that's actually my granddad's uh old shotgun uh belt there original there's some original like ely cartridges paper cartridges as well uh, and one of his own uh, old knives um but yeah so you can get into to air gun shooting familiarize yourself back in in, into shooting sports and start finding a club really that is the uh the best uh sort of the, the best first step uh, what are you, you guys seem to have a little conversation in in your uh in the in the chat amongst yourselves that's all good keep yourselves busy i'll keep on talking uh dave uh david can you own any 9mm calibre guns in the UK? Yes, slightly touchy subjects at, at the moment, Dave. So we can't have uh, semi-automatic full-bore rifles. They were banned after a, a, a shooting. The only semi-automatics that we can have is in 2-2 rimfire. But some very clever people came up with uh, the Mars and lever release. And the lever release is most famous for being in nine millimeter it takes glock mags now it's a pretty much an ar-15 uh, style rifle actually i will use uh, i'll show you let's uh let's go southern so it's a company called southern gun company um this might go a bit weird i haven't done this before 
and it seems to all be working. Is my internet going to drop out? No. So this is the company. Uh, is that the 9 mil? That might actually be the 223. That's the 9 mil. Or it might be 45 ACP. Um, so this is the gun. It's the Southern Gun Company uh, 9 mil lever release. And it's this. Uh, oh, you can't see my cursor. But you can see just above the trigger, there's that little lever. Almost looks like a safety. Basically, the way that works is the the bolt will hold back you depress the lever it will release the bolt and then you can fire so you end up getting this sort of rhythm going where you get quicker than a bolt action cycling but no still nowhere near semi-automatic those have fortunately have now been banned because the home office and police deemed that it was uh, the the rates of fire will were far too dangerous uh, but other guns other than those mechanisms you can own in 9mm. So the Chiapa Rhino, we have the Chiapa Rhino long barreled pistol. I'll pull one of those up for you. Uh, Chiapa. I need to sort out the setting here because I'm like, this is right in my face and I'm stretching out to type. Let's pull one of these up. So, um, you know, Americans, if you've never seen a long barreled revolver, uh, this is going to be quite a shock. Here we go. So this is the the handguns that we can own here uh, within the UK. The reason for the silly coat hanger and the what looks to be suppressor, it's not that is just a shroud because it's got a 12 inch barrel. The laws here in the UK are that you can't have a gun under sort of the standard general section one certificate that has a barrel shorter than 12 inch inches or a overall length shorter than 24 inches so there's a 12 inch barrel there with the shroud trying to make it look as pretty as possible and then you have the coat hanger to make the overall length 24 inches but you can get those uh, revolvers in nine millimeter you can get them in 357 or obviously 38 as well and i believe a 44 magnum is coming so uh, i know a few people that are very excited uh, for that Bolt actions you can have in 9mm if you wanted. I do know that companies like Calibre Innovations uh, are developing or have developed a, a straight pull rifle. So it's an AR-15 with a lever on the side and you manually actuate the bolt. You, you're, you're able to um, cycle it yourself effectively. Those are still all legal in 9mm. So I hope that answers your question. We can have them. The LBR with the highest return rate. Uh, yes, the quality control of Chiapa wasn't particularly the best, to be honest. Um, w w I think we've only seen one come back, um, and that was to do with a cylinder gap issue. Uh, I know a few. there have been people with a few issues. There was somebody who had a complete cracked... Uh, I think the the cylinder or the frame cracked of the gun. It's still disputed whether that was user error with ho uh, home loads or whether there was a, an issue with the gun. It's all been sort of forensically examined, and the manufacturer Chiapa and the UK distributor are saying one thing and the customer's saying another. So I can't really comment on um, on what's what on on that one. Um, but but yeah, the, it's to me the Chiapa. I've, I've never seen it as a competition gun. Uh, I, there's things like the uh, Rude Fat Dog. Uh, they're based down in Devon or Cornwall. Uh, they make the Smith and Wesson uh, six eight six uh, long barreled revolver. Yes, we butcher Smith and Wesson six eight sixes here uh, to UK specification. There's a video on the channel if you want to go and see that. Uh, or shall I just bring it up? You're interested in seeing that? Any Americans interested in seeing a UK legal Smith and Wesson? Let me know. I'll I'll bring it up. Uh, so. They they cost you know, I think it's something like two three thousand pounds or three four thousand pounds really expensive. That's a competition LBR. There's the Taurus that was a really good one. They don't make them here in UK specification anymore. So the Chiapa Rhino really is sort of the main option. But I've always seen it as like a fun plinker. If I'm going to be um, completely honest, I'd still love to have one. Uh, I, I would still go and do gallery with it. I know it wouldn't necessarily be the most optimum thing to have it, uh, but it's just a cool gun. I've always loved the look of the Chiapa personally. Yeah, a little pricey, £1,300, £1,400, but um, that's the price of, of guns here in the UK. If if any Americans are watching, a Smith & Wesson 1522 costs £600 for the base model. Yep, um, thing, things are expensive here. 
David Kiddle, Dan Wesson are making a UK spec factory result revolver. That's very interesting. Yeah, again, LBRs, long barrel revolvers are few and far between. Uh, very hard to get hold of. So a Dan Wesson that gives a little bit more uh, flex. Well, gives a little bit more variety and choice doesn't it which is uh, absolutely fantastic now for anyone that joined us on the last live stream we talked quite a lot about the uk uh, discord server let me just bring that up for you guys uh, if you don't know what discord is it's basically a big uh, chat room and there is a uk shooting discord it's open not just to uk shooters but anyone that wants to learn more about uk shooting or uk uh, firearms law and let's try and get it off they you're going to do me a solid aren't you guys you're going to there's definitely going to be something uh that i shouldn't i shouldn't show uh but anyway here goes i mean technically this is a moderated group so i blame the mods if if anything ends up on my stream that shouldn't uh but there you go here is a look at the uh uk shooting discord we've got loads of different what is that do i need to vet that why why are you talking about rhubarb and custard I, d I don't actually want to know. I'm I, I'm scared to death. I think I'm going to do a meme review of the UK Discord memes, but it's going to be a filmed, planned video so that I can edit it in case something spicy comes up. Um, so you can see uh, that you know you, you've got your welcome page. So basically, if you want to go on that, guys, please somebody put a link in the. I, I don't have the invite link to hand, so please somebody chuck that in the uh, the chat now for me uh when you when you click on that invite link you'll be um taken to this page make sure i think it might have changed now but uh, you have to basically accept this should automatically pop up i think ollie was saying the other night uh, but if not go and find this little box click it and then you'll get ent um, entry to the whole discord and you can see all of the different subjects and different things that you can go and talk about um, and there seems to be always somebody on there but they're they're new they're trying to grow it so they were doing a competition it is now shut uh, but they asked me if I wanted to uh, announce the winner of that competition and I've got that already um, let, let's yes it's still there um, so these are the the entrants uh, and here it goes so it's going to appear up the top um, so this isn't pre-planned uh, it's going to be completely random so basically if you joined the discord within a certain time and you reached a certain level in it the more you comment the more you post the more time you're on there sort of the higher ranking you seem to get it's a little bit addictive if I'm, going to, if I'm going to be completely honest and these are the guys that joined in the right at the right time and also uh, reached the right level so let's give that a hit and it's joey45 there we go uh, I don't know necessarily who Joey45 is, uh, but I believe you've won a kick-ass backpack. Uh, I'm sure the mod team will be in touch uh, very soon to arrive, uh, to get that to you guys, or to you, Joey. So there we go. There, There is the UK Discord. I believe they are going to be doing more prizes. They're going to be, be doing more giveaways. They really are sort of driven to grow the, the Discord. It is it's like an instant Facebook. If you go on there and ask a question, there'll be someone there to, to answer it pretty well, uh, pretty quickly. Uh, so getting into shooting UK firearms law uh, are, uh, can be a little bit, um, can be a little bit, you know, of a, of a minefield. It can be very confusing at times. So I think it's just another resource to make it as, uh, as easy as possible. Tech gamer 45. Are you, are you by any chance, Joey 45? Or, or is that a long lost cousin? Um, but congratulations uh, if, if if it is. If it is Tech Gamer 45, I know you've been a long time subscriber and viewer, certainly of the live streams. So um, it'd be awesome if, if you are the same guy. Um, did someone post the Discord link? Is any, is, no, no one want to do it. So I've just been talking about joining the link. Is there an invite link or do I have to do everything myself? I guess I have to do everything myself then. Um, <laughs> boogie just asking so let me get it i i have got it somewhere uh it would just have been nice to you know just focus on the stream for once guys you know a little bit of help is it too much to ask obviously so i know what's going to happen i'm going to find it and by the time oh no that's not going to work 
by the time I find it, someone's going to post it because you're like that. Copy link address. Oh, that is oh, no, that's gone wrong. That's gone very wrong. That's gone wrong. Bear with me, guys. I'm trying to find it five times. You have posted it. Um, bring back handguns. Completely agree. Should have never lost them in the, in the first place. Um, people are asking for it. Maybe it's getting auto spammed. Um, I can't see it. Maybe other people can't see it. Let's. It's because Facebook is being less than. Oh, here we go. I've got it. So if maybe I'm posting it again, but this is the UK shooting Discord. Hit that link. Go and find it. And Blackstone for Black Blackstone forty five. What is it with 45s? You've got Tep Gamer, you two brothers or something. I guess maybe one of you, Joey. <laughs> um, again, both of you are long-time viewers and subscribers of the channel uh, and the live stream. So um, if it is one of you guys, that would be uh, absolutely awesome. But that's the link to the Discord. Go and check it out. Just notice we're doing rather well on the... Oh, well, I say that. It's just dropped off. Uh, I think we've had the most concurrent viewers of any live stream. So, woo, celebration. Um, that's Ashley. Got the perfect thick thing thing to celebrate. Um, yeah, so anybody new to the channel, consider uh, subscribing. This channel's all about talking about UK shooting. We go abroad quite a lot as well, so you do see to, you do get to see some proper guns. Uh, but it's all about trying to help people into the UK shooting sports. Make sure you subscribe, drop a like, support the channel, whatever you want to do, or just sit there, put your feet up, and uh, and relax and and enjoy. So uh, another topic, something that came out, we've discussed this. This is one of the sort of threats to our sport at the moment, which is the UK firearms, uh, sorry, the UK, it's the firearm safety consultation. Uh, basically, the Home Office have announced that they're going to be reviewing a certain areas of legislation within the UK. This is an open consultation. Anybody can go and put in your... Uh, your input but there's been a lot of questions about what sort of answers should you put in what you know what's the best way to answer this for the for the good of UK shooting now I'm not necessarily the best with English and wording and certainly when it comes to the to legal speak so I've been waiting for like most of you guys have for the organizations that most of us pay the wages of to help us out a little bit but don't worry Basque has been observing the situation and uh, it's only taken them two months to come out with some advice so I mean they got there in the end um, it's only it's, we've got a month less I uh, left I guess of getting any answers or submissions in but they have given some suggestions so I'm going to go over those now and we can have a bit of a review of them uh, so for, for those of you that don't know about the, the consultation it's it's covering on some main points uh, high muzzle energy rifles they're looking at uh, further s sort of security measures above that of a gun shop for any rifle with above a muzzle energy um, muzzle energy of 13,500 joules they're looking at the miniature rifle exemption we were talking about that earlier basically as it stands in the UK at the moment you can technically go out and buy any gun uh, in the semi-automatic or bolt action up to 0.23 caliber without a license or any checks they're looking at bringing it in so that the miniature rifle exemption is only there for 2.2 long rifle uh, semi-automatics and, and bolt actions but also that you will need a firearm certificate a section one firearm certificate to be able to then go and buy the gun so they're looking at reviewing that they are also looking at banning the unsupervised use of air guns for anybody under the age of 18 at the moment i believe it's uh, 14 to 18 year olds they can be lent, lent an air gun to go and use they can go off legally on their own and use it unsupervised due to a few deaths here in the uk you know never treat something like an accident when you can get some more gun laws uh, introduced they are they're looking at removing that bit of law and there was the uh, ammunition component part so at the moment when you have a completed round that is licensable uh, the powder and the primers also require certification re will require uh, sort of a the the authority to be to possess but it's not currently within law that you need a license for any brass or cases or any bullet heads one would argue that it's already legal to have a completed round and it's already illegal to be in possession of the powder and the primer without a license so why making the rest of the ammunition any more well 
making it illegal to pos illegal to possess what what's that going to solve uh, but that's what they're looking at doing and it, it's all going to be around intent for that so if you have the intent to make ammunition of course intent uh, intent is very objective which is how they love to oh, subjective not objective subjective subjective i'm losing the plot here subjective um it's very subjective which is how they like our laws so that they can bend and twist it to sort of suit how they want so that's uh, the long and the short of it the consultation the main points and these are the suggested responses to the home office online survey so to to be completely honest i am going to say that this is these are probably the best answers to go for if you're stuck of course we can all think for ourselves we can all uh, put in our own answers and you know give that to to bask uh, sorry give that to the home office and use our own heads but if you're like me if if you so, if you can struggle to sort of uh let's say interpret sort of cleverly worded questions as the home office ones are then this should be a good uh, a good starting point so um these will look familiar if you've already been on them again why they've taken two months when a lot of people have already uh, submitted to release these i don't know but these are the suggested questions so you can just tell how leaded these are and how easy it would be to sort of advocate further gun uh, laws and further gun controls you know to what extent do you consider that the present level three security requirements if specified in rules made by the Secretary of State would be sufficient to mitigate the risk posed by high muzzle energy rifles. Um, obviously, you can have a, you know, don't agree or strongly disagree or strongly agree. Well, well, of course, we, like, do, do are you agreeing for more there? Are you agreeing that they are sufficient? It, it is sort of trickily worded. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these ones. Uh, I'll put the link, actually... Uh, in the oh the chat i'm on the wrong screen that's fantastic um let me bring it up on the other computer and i'll, I'll put the link in here so this is very sort of uk specific um but go and see overall yes they are uh suggesting or they are agreeing with more legislation to uh, again they they are very much taking the um give them something approach but unfortunately you know they they do like to throw certain disciplines under the bus now uh, what i've stopped on uh, i am trying to find that link for you guys unfortunately it's not here which is fantastic um anyway i'll probably do a separate video on this so if you're interested in in the link if if you're on the basque email you can go and see it i'll post oh can i send it via facebook let's see oh did that just switch all my screen i think it did um anyway ignore all that um <laughs> let's um i'm not gonna bring up facebook that no, i can't i can't do it. i can't get it over anyway question 13 right any other comments on the proposal of strengthening controls for miniature rifle ranges um sorry i've, I've just seen it flash up on, on my screen going all funky but anyway start again Question 13, any other comments on these proposals for strengthening controls on miniature rifle ranges, including any comments on the cost and assumptions used in the impact statement uh, assessment and any costs not included? Now, what Basque is suggesting as a response is the risk assessment is incorrect when it says there is a risk that a rogue operator of a miniature rifle range could sell their firearms on the black market following the legis legislative oh god i need um following the change because there is no legal means for them to sell the firearms operators who choose not to apply for a firearm certificate can sell them to registered firearms dealer or uh, existing certificate holders um with an open authority to acquire the rifles okay so can you see why that's a little bit funny so they're saying that the assumption that they could sell them on the black market is incorrect uh, because there is no legal means to do it the last time i checked and i might be completely wrong with this so please correct me if i'm wrong black market meant illegal 
So if the if the risk assessment is assessing that there is a risk that they could be sold on a black market, that sort of inherently implies that it's not a legal means to begin with. And Basque have sort of tried to make this point that, well, there's no legal means to do them, so there's no risk of them doing it. Because, of course, nobody, criminals don't break laws, do they? Like, it's, I think, it, Basque have, I don't know, maybe they were on the jungle juice when it, when it came round to that question and writing a response for it. But it just seems utterly insane that they've talked about, well, this can't be true. They can't, they can't sell it on the black market because there's no legal means for them to do it. I, I really doubt, I, like, I've brought into question whether Basque are aware of something called the dark net and whether they are aware that there are many mechanisms for criminals to sell illegal firearms on an illegal black market. Um, but yeah, anyone joining the stream, anyone from the States, this is the largest shooting organization in the country. This is what who we... Uh, depend on to protect us against uh, against the police and against the Home Office making new arbitrary laws and then they come out and make statements like that yeah so um, anyway uh, but don't worry Basque are observing the situation so it's, it's all good it's all good that will be a meme it won't die it will be used repeatedly um, so um, so yes you saw so yeah, well, you're not you're not getting that comment approved because that's utter. So someone someone's calling me racist, but it's been flagged up. Um, yeah, you you should nah. Yeah, no, that's that's. Anyway, they have a lot of pr uh, practice in observation. Yes, unfortunately, Basque do more like to observe our sport going down the shitter rather than protecting it. Unless you're wearing tweed, unless you're shooting at a bird, and unless your name's Chris Packham. They don't seem to really care that much, but anyway, this isn't this isn't a Basque bashing special. Um, we've we've already had one of those. Well, no, we had one last year, so there's going to be one this year. There's got to be Basque is going to do something. Uh, so so yeah, that's basically the uh, the responses. Go and check out the Basque website if you if you want access to them. Uh, I really can't figure out a way how to get it over. Uh, actually, I I can. I've I've just figured it out. I think. Let's bring up Google. Bring up Facebook. Oh, this is this is really convoluted, but I, I think it's important overall. Apart from that one question, and apart from the fact that they seem very keen on just you know, giving up, um, you know, without a fight on certain points, I, I do think that their responses are are ultimately the best. Just just maybe put your own um, your own thing in for uh, for question thirteen. But anyway, any other questions? Uh, Basque approved, absolutely, Oliver. Um, you got to have that Basque approval, don't you? Something that I I yearn for and will probably never get. Right, I've got that over onto Facebook, so I should be able to come here. Uh, but of course, it is we we have until the the middle of February to get the consultation responses in. It is incredibly important we do. If nobody from the shooting community actually tells them that some of these new suggestions are just absolutely pointless are going to do nothing apart from just destroy the uh, destroy the sport then it's just going to be all the antis ju jumping on there saying ban it ban it ban it ban it um but there you go oh what is what is going on it's, that that might be it it's not letting me oh god's sake facebook has anybody else know it might just be me but has anybody else noticed that um facebook has been utterly rubbish the last few days it's like royally pooed the bed and it just loves spamming it can't it can't let you just copy a link it's got to put in its facebook gumph uh let's have a look let's get it over to ha there we go. Finally, managed managed to get it round. So that's the answer to the question. Um, and I believe in there as well, there will be a link to the Home Office survey. It takes five minutes. Please go and have your say. If you need to, use the Basque answers as examples. You're so damn proud to be banned from joining Basque. Why are you banned, Daniel? This is news to me user was basque observed for this post yep basque are always um 
Basket always uh, observing. Ah, little little Facebook dig from uh, from my mum there. Uh, hi mum, thanks for joining. Number one fan. Um, that's because they're so busy cancelling everyone. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, the one. This is probably a point to talk about. I'm not so optimistic for the future of gun channels uh, and and gun companies on Facebook and YouTube. With everything that's going on in the states at the moment, um, you know, say if you disagree. Oh, my camera has has uh, timed out. It's uh, it's it has died. But don't worry, guys. It's still got voice. I'm still here. I haven't gone away. Um, maybe I need to get a fan for it. Let's get it get it a uh, give it a bit of a cool down. Um, I'll be back. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm still here. Yep, that's a live fail right there. But luckily, I've got my webcam as a backup, and I'm just. Let's get that back on there. There we go. I'm back. See, even when it goes wrong, it's fairly, um, fairly straightforward. Fairly, uh, what's the word? Seamless. That was seamless, right? So yeah, the the Sony's overheated and has um has died a swift death. But um, yep, F F F F F R R P. Sorry, sorry, Sony. I overworked it. Um, maybe that's to do with the uh, with the cam link. But there we go. I've seen it come back. Slightly different angle. Actually, it's not. It looks looks pretty good. That's pretty good for uh, for the the webcam. Um, and yes, embarrassingly, can you actually see that one there? Yeah, if you can if you can read that book there, you're in for a a, a little um, a little tickle. Um, so yeah, I it's I, I specifically made sure that the room wasn't too hot because I know the Sony does have a um, habit of overheating. Uh, <laughs> so um, we we'll see. We we'll let it cool down. It's obviously shut off. And we we get it back. I think it's just trying to run it through the HDMI and it's it's shit the bed. But anyway, that cam looks a lot better. You mean this the one I'm currently on or the old one? Because otherwise, wasted a shitload of money on it. Um, did someone? Um, sorry, Wonderloaf. I did see if you're still here. Thank you. I did see it pop up and I forgot um, to say thank you. Thank you for the donation. CZ handguns are the best handguns. Don't at me. Um, I mean, see, they're pretty good. We're still waiting for a UK legal long barrel pistol to come out. Uh, Shield were teasing us with one at the British Shooting Show well, two years ago now. Um, and, of course, Cotswold Classic Arms. As far as I'm aware with Cotswold Classic Arms, Otto is just waiting for enough orders for that um, for that gun to be able to put it into production. So, or to... to to place an order with the factory. So if you are interested in a CZ long barrel pistol, there is a review of it. It's the um, is it the Antrag Zenith, I think it is. That's what it's called. There is a review on the channel. We were some of the first in the UK to be able to uh, shoot one. And yeah, it's it's a stunning bit of kit. Very very weighty, but on the on the on the plate rack, it was absolutely uh, awesome. Like, I've never shot something so. Um, so fast on on the plate rack so um, actually if we can no I'm not giving I'll probably just finish the stream off with this with the with the webcam I'm not I'm not going um, but I was thinking maybe I'll mess about and try and get the Sony up but I don't think it's uh, it's too bad right see seamless thank you thank you John good input there Sony's a lot better it's all in the post product yeah yeah um, the one you're on now is not as dark. Yeah, but it seems to peak. Anyway, let's stop talking about cameras. Let's talk about guns. That's what we're here for, right? Um, at least at least the Mac didn't burst into flames. You know, I said there might be some sp spontaneous combustion. I sort of wish I'd held fire on my Defiance so I could get an L11922 from Otto. Yeah, Captain Crack, you, you, you probably know what I think of with the Defiance. Um... Socom Ted, a link. Um, what a link of what? Do you want to do? You want to have a look at the CZ LBP? You want to have a look at the L one one nine? Either now, like since so so Arius, the just a note that the cam link since that's disconnected, my my Mac has calmed down. It's no longer going to uh, burst into flames. Uh, let's go the Antreg Zenith. Even if it wasn't what you were talking about we're, we're gonna have a look at it anyway so let's have a look at uh, this um, 
don't know if is this playing audio to you guys probably not oh no well it's not playing at the moment is it no it doesn't look like doesn't look like it um so it'll be a little intro so you can have a look at it first oh how arty how arty is that sexual um but that's it it's a cz replica in 2.2 semi-automatic and it is long barrel pistol so you've got the uh, long barrel obviously you've got the uh the rod that's actually otto in the background so the um inventor you can see it's like a split slide it's got that sort of weird slide to it took a little bit of getting used to if i'm gonna be honest uh, not as much sort of surface area to grip and and hold on to uh, but it shot absolutely uh flat so um and obviously that that's me um if if you hadn't figured uh no though no, sorry that's callum i'm gary um Let's try and find it. There should be some more footage of it shooting. Um, yeah, let's should we pause it. Actually, pause it on a bit. That's good. I must have some close-up shots. There we go. So that's it. That is the potentially first you like available to market um, CZ22. Of course, again, Shield are threatening to bring one out as well. Haven't had a chance to shoot that, but it should be. Uh, pretty good shield tend to do things the right way as well uh, but as soon as that's available um, as soon as the brave uh, first i think he only needs like 10 people maybe 20 to go and give him her deposit and he'll get it in order with uh, get antrag to start making them and once he's had the first batch made then it sort of snowball snowballs from there i know with the the water ppq getting the first batch in was like it was, it was just an absolute massive hurdle for them once they had got that in then they um you know the, the second batch came came through within like the next you know six months so yeah uh how much is the antreg zenith going to cost that's a good question that's a really good question yes it's going to cost yes uh go and watch the video it's in the information's in the video it's it's definitely it's not a cheap lbp if I remember rightly it might be around the 1500 pound mark uh, around that give or take um, maybe 1700 maybe 1300 something like that but go and watch that video on the channel if, if you want to learn more about it I can't remember off the top of my head uh, as a long barrel lefty as a, as a long barrel lefty um, what do you mean long barrel lefty uh, if the 1522 to start or something um, to a battle up a battle arms build okay uh john it depends how much you hate money uh if you want to give somebody copious amounts of money then go for the battle arms it will be worth it but it will be obviously very expensive the the ambi is probably going to be the best thing for you being a lefty but there's plenty of left hand shooters that shoot the uh the 1522 no problem whatsoever you go and get an ambi safety for it i don't know say from magload um you can get the ambi uh, mag release for them again probably uh, oh yeah magload um and then the two main functions of the gun you know your, your safety and your uh your your mag release are then ambi dexterous and um I, I can neither confirm nor deny, but there might be a new version of an Ambi Mag release coming out at some point. So keep an eye on that. That will be an even bigger improvement over the the current one. What what else for? What else are you going to struggle with? Of course, well, for the Ambies, can they do? Can they reverse the ejection? I don't think so. You, even with the battle arms, you're still going to be shooting yourself in the face with brass. Uh, but um yeah i i don't know i i would say if you're sort of for a first gun for a lefty go for the 1522 you can make it left hand friendly uh if you if you just want to go and push the boat out go and get the um the battle arms you are not going to regret it um apart from obviously spending all that money but it's a fantastic gun why would you want a double action single action trigger on a zenith single action seems better uh it's personal preference uh there's a lot of uh so the cz's are naturally uh double action um for the first shot so you, what you sometimes see in competitions is people like literally dumping the first round they bring the holster up and they just dump the first round to get it back onto that sing single action because uh, obviously the first the, the double action is going to be a lot 
harder, especially if you're going for a, pr a precise shot, you might pull it doing that double action. Um, it's it's really just personal preference. And again, CZ probably is the best all-round sort of IPSC gun. Of course, there is the 2011s, the plethora of different manufacturers for 2011s in IPSC, but it's uh, it's all about um, the CZ for, for some people. They are one of the biggest brands. Uh, John Thompson current plan is uh, MMP plus Maglode Farkles. Great. Yeah, I, I will highly recommend that option for you. There are a few upgrades available from Maglode for the uh, the battle arms, including the Magwell. There is. It's, there's nothing on the site because we haven't actually had a gun since designing it to be able to take photos and put it out on the site. Um, but there is a really cool, uh, really cool uh, Mag magwell for the uh, battle arms rifles and it and it follows the um sort of unique look of the magwell shall we shall i bring that up if anyone we've been talking about the ambies quite a bit let's uh battle arms bad amb let's bring that up oh on the first hit would you look at that um <laughs> just a little bit of uh self gratification there uh, here we go let's again i should have a like a little teaser to begin with why isn't that come on do it there's there's the maglode magwell for it they are available to buy if you have a battle arms go and um go and hit us up but this is the ambi it's the pdw as well it's absolutely awesome bit of kit so watch the that ambi mag release uh, it's just absolutely insane. Uh, really, really nice. Again, Otto builds superb rifles. It worked flawlessly. The stock, not necessarily a competition stock, but does look absolutely cool as hell. And and yeah, that's um, that's it. Again, they're going to run you. I think it's about two and a half, three thousand pounds, depending on the full specification. Uh, but again, that Ambi Mag release, it took a little bit of getting used to but it's uh, worth its weight in gold in, in my opinion but yeah what what else are you talking about what else you want to know any questions anything anything you want to talk about uh what else so we we talked about all of that we talked about all of that oh yeah something really really cool i'm gonna have to bring up the uh shared screen again uh let me just find this first so um let's let's rerun the clock a little bit the video that went out this week was about section seven. This is a, an area that is sort of shrouded in, in mystery when it comes to shooting sports in the UK. Uh, they are a little bit of a secretive bunch and they don't necessarily seek uh, act, sort of active promotion, uh, but I think it's a very important part of our, of our shooting scene. I think it's gonna form the foundation of us potentially ever getting handguns back uh, in the future and they um you know so there's a video that goes in depth into everything section 73 to the best of my ability again i don't have a 73 i'm not you know hugely experienced with it but i did a lot of research for that video uh, to make sure it was as accurate as possible um so for those of you that don't know you can actually own handguns here within the uk maybe that's another video i should just get up and and show you guys if you haven't already seen it so basically when they tried to ban everything under dunblane uh, or after the the dunblane shooting there was a load of historically significant handguns that were going to be put in the scrapper so they came up with this uh, section uh, section seven to be able to preserve anything that's historically uh, significant and i'll skip it past there because it's just the intro after that so all of these guns, what you're about to see, all of these are done within the UK. They're legally owned in the UK, uh, but you do need to... The, the Section 7.3, Section 7.1, Section 7.1 allows you to keep the guns at home as long as they were manufactured prior to, I think it's January the 1st, 1919. Uh, but with Section 7.3, the guns are kept at a secure site and you are able to then shoot them under specified days um the hbsa nicely timed there like i planned it uh, are sort of the authority on this go and check out the hbsa website if you want to learn more 
Uh, and in my research for this, this is all the legislation, just to say you I'm not just making it up. Uh, but yeah, you can own some pretty interesting sort of artifact. Oh, that's just gone big. Um, not the first time. Uh, so that's section seven. But in sort of researching this and talking to a uh, a member of the HPSA who was fairly complimentary on the on the video of it, which is which is great. It means that it was overall accurate and and a good representation of it. I, I he sent me this uh, channel, um, and it is the Vickers Machine Gun Collection and Research Association. And again, this is in the UK. Uh, these guns are owned legally in the UK. There are all sorts of weird and wonderful legislations um, for you to do it and now this video is actually showing you the difference between the full auto and a semi-auto Vickers yes you can have a semi-auto Vickers but if you're interested in the, Vi the Vickers machine gun or, or learning about something that I wasn't even aware of this is a, an association that has um, has access to these functioning uh, these functioning machine guns. I do believe some of them might be um, sort of converted to blank fire only, but from what the the HPSA member was saying, I believe you can, under this association, uh, or they have access to and allow members to shoot live fire full auto. So it's all about the history. These are, I think, collection. Uh, so they're, they're sort of history aficionados first and then fire firearm enthusiasts second so they show you you know they go and you dress up in uh, period gear and they go and simulate what it would have been like and they do various things like using um, the the range finders so there was a video that I saw on here um, of them actually range finding using all the old kit they break down and show you all the ins and outs of the gun it's absolutely fascinating so if you want to learn a bit more about the Vickers a bit more about sort of the sort of military history then go and check it out and just as a reminder it is the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association um, some absolutely fascinating stuff there for anybody uh, that's interested um, I'm going to try as successful or unsuccessful as it may be to get the uh, to get the high quality camera up because obviously you know a face like mine you need to really appreciate it in um, high definition uh, let's see if this is going to work. Uh, let's switch it back over to the webcam so I'm still here. Um, this might be where it goes completely wrong. And let's see if that comes and bursts into life. Yes, it has. Great success. Seamless. Oh, streaming God. Absolutely. I'm, get, I'm getting the hang of this. I'm, a, I'm actually getting the hang of this. I feel, I feel pretty good. Maybe I should phone up do Donut Operator and see if there's an opening in the um, Donut News Network. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so yeah, but back on to, to section seven, I do I do want to say I didn't sort of use the video as this opportunity because um, I, I wanted it to be a, more about people um, that were interested in in this historic sort of area of firearms. Now, a lot of people, how I I have admittedly proposed section seven in the past is like a way you can get a handgun, a way that you can legally own a handgun um, and go shooting and enjoy it that's really not what the HPSA is is all about and that's what this member was explaining to me again they are sort of first and foremost about the history and secondly about the um the the actual guns themselves and and that's why for them it's not necessarily so important to to go and shoot them to actually go and experience the gun uh, it's more about protecting and preserving the history of the firearm so I do want to stress that I do have my let's say differences with the organization I do think that they could be a little bit more open and again not necessarily like come on down have a shoot but be more open as an organization to maybe encourage more people to be more passionate and interested in the history side like it's not something I'm hugely knowledgeable about I'd love to learn more but I've always felt these organizations are a little bit stuffy um, and especially when you have to sit through a two-person interview to be accepted into the into the organization and I know that's to to weed out the time wasters, the people that literally just want to go and shoot a handgun, which is admittedly probably me. But again, it, it puts people like me off that would have a genuine interest still in learning about the history. I just might need a bit more sort of selling on it. Um, but yeah, anyway, HPSA, if you want to uh, learn more about it, 
oh my god that is dark not as dark as my dead baby jokes no i'm not saying them no, i'm like no it's not happening maybe um maybe i'll crack a few later on uh, crack a few off later on in the discord that sounds wrong anyway moving on moving along swiftly um what uh chris lewis section seven video was very interesting but that dude with the bar was a bit dodgy okay so i'm gonna have to i'm definitely gonna have to show you this because i did think about removing this but at the end of the day the hbsa as i was just saying they are um a little bit more let's say weary about putting the wrong thing out there and i assumed that somebody had obviously vetted and were, was quite happy for this to go out um let's find where i've lost where i am display capture turn that on um so this is the end of the video this is the cool stuff as well it is a really cool club to be a part of the hbsa because they do their like historic machine gun shoots um so people talking about the bar uh, this is what they're talking about. Uh, it will come up in a second. Now, what what people are concerned about is he's firing this full auto, and there are people. Um, you, you can see again. You can't see my cursor, but to the to the left hand of the screen, about middle, like halfway up um, to the left, um, there's people sat there forward of the firing line. Now, there is still a good forty five degrees of sort of safety there if something was to happen. Um, but I've seen a lot of comments of people that aren't particularly happy, let's say, with with that. Again, I, I am going to just put my hands up and say, look, if the HBSA were happy with it, if Bisley were happy with it, uh, you know, they they really don't need any reason to sort of be unhappy with anything sort of safety wise. Uh, then if they were happy with it, then it's sort of good enough for me. Um, oh, yeah. And, you know, just uh just a, a motorcycle mounted machine gun so yeah it's it's a cool club i i have to say i am maybe a little bit jealous of the stuff they get on they um they get to do but it's more the frustration that there are obviously going to be loads of people that would love to get involved with this love to learn more about it and just experience it moreover and unfortunately again i feel they're a little bit in you know preventative in in growing the sport as it were but uh, you know they're, they're still doing a good job at the end of the day it was the hbsa is the main reason that we have um we, we have section seven to begin with so you know they've they've done some amazing work um and they've got to have credit for that uh, just clearing a few things i've been tagged in the discord this can't be good this cannot be good where is it um, I'm gonna have to see it later. Someone's tagged me, but it's not showing me. Oh no! Oh no! That can wait till later. Um. Anyway, any um, <laughs> uh, any um questions? Oh, the uh, the comment about the babies went down well. That's for sure. two-person interview for fuck's sake they're not marrying their daughter you're not married that yeah i know they they are again they i mean the the sort of subscriber that was telling me about um about it who is a member of the hbsa uh, was saying like admittedly there are they are a little stuffy but the knowledge within that organization the knowledge within that membership he says is absolutely insane these are guys that you know would talk about the different coatings of on variants of firearms and you know and and real like nitpicky detail so it's you basically have to prove that you are like as anoraki as they are on on the sport before you get let into the club so that's it's not something i'm probably ever going to get um accepted uh, into i want to start a collection of pistols forgotten by cpos will that fit started with two clocks history um <laughs> uh, maybe uh, we've been speaking i've been speaking to a few people whether like historically significant ipsc guns would would necessarily count as a collection so this is the thing with section seven as well you need a theme for the collection you can't just go i want handguns give me handguns it, that's not how it works you need to say like look i am really interested in this area of firearms history um now the most common one is is uh you know 
guns that are inspired by Mr. Browning, you know, because that, you know, coincidentally covers most of them. So a lot of the seven Section 7 collections are 1911s, and also that's a big, big selection of guns for you to go and collect. There's loads... Um, prior to 1919 so you can have them on section 7-1 but also you can grow your collection and as I explained in the video you're able to grow into a modern collection eventually because once you've collected like all of the years prior to the modern ones you sort of run out of places to go and, and I have heard of cases of people buying brand new like special editions still and and you know rare models like rare new guns um, into their collection and being approved for it. Um, so yeah, any, anything you want to know anything more about Section 7, I would really highly recommend going on to the, uh, the HBSA website. And no, it's not the bank. It's the Historical Breach Loading Small Arms Association. They've got a couple of videos on YouTube, um, which I, I did uh, within fair use make use of. Uh, so most of, you've probably already seen, well, you've, good, you've seen a little snippet of it. But if you want to see more of that sort of footage, go on to the HBSA website. Theme of Section 7, Hollywood. Mm, well, if it's like famous famous actors' guns, Bretta 92FS. That's a brilliant idea. Um, I know pe there's some people that are starting collections based on UK legal guns. So they've they've been able to like open up um, as many like LBPs as they want and you know funny like adaptation guns for the uk market of course mars and lever release they're not going to be able to anymore um but yeah i mean that's a theme of a collection obviously you don't need that for section seven you can have those over on a on a section one. Oh, actually something that um i did pull up we talked about magpul last week um and some new products some new news uh, about them and they have released this or they're going to it's coming soon uh, the P Mag D50, and you know what this would have been absolutely perfect for? The lever release. It's almost like Nabus and the Home Office knew that this was coming from Magpul, right? It's like they absolutely knew it, and they were like, "Jesus, we can't have a rifle with a 50 round drum mag." And they've obviously never seen a you know 50 round 223 mag for a straight pull, but anyway, um, yeah. So this was sort of the big news from Magpul, uh, 50 round. Glock drum mag so uh, yeah that that should be fun that should be very interesting uh, and actually talking of new products uh, I've got to keep him happy uh, let's talk a little bit about maglo there's a couple of new products that have come out no that's the back end of the website I do not want to be going in there certainly not live on the stream um, let's go there so if you don't know I work full-time uh, with Connors uh, on Magload, it's what pays the rent. Um, so if you want to, if you want to support Connors and I, go and check out Magload. So there's some really cool stuff on there. Uh, it's gone into mobile mode because I have this. Uh, so this is a new product uh, for you guys. So anyone that's into practical shotgun, um, this is worth checking out. Go on. There you go. It's working. Uh, working well. So it's a double uh, shell holder. Uh, and it's click compatible, so um, that's probably the best photo overall. Uh, let's just zoom into there. Uh, so basically, you get the 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 shell holder, and it goes into the click base. So it's a QRB that you need to receive it, uh, and it holds two shells. Now this is really good as an ultimate backup or as an initial load. So when you come up to the line, you will you know put one in the chamber, maybe one on your shot saver. Uh, and then load the gun up to your division capacity. And this was requested by a load of customers, and, well, Connor's designed it and made it, and it's now for sale. So um, if you go on the page on Maglode, it's maglode.co.uk, you can buy the holder, you will need the base, but there's a, a very handy little link there, and that's the base as well. So you can use it for mag, um, you know, magazines, you can use it for um, you know, any sort of holsters, any accessories that you want mounted and this is sort of the big news from Magload. it is a fully adjustable tune tunable trigger for the benelli supernova available in a range of colors um those are the colors if you're interested in uh so i think it's how many is it nine yeah nine uh and you can see actually the sort of 
the genius of it. You've got those two screws for adjustment, and of course it's flat. So Connors have written a nice nice description of there. So it's like pre-travel, over-travel, massive improvement, reduces various sort of freezing up of the gun. Uh, so yeah, new products from Magload. Just wanted to get those out and, and show you. There are some interesting things coming in, in the future, so stay tuned. Go and hit up Magload on Facebook. Make sure you go and give them a like and follow them. And while you're at it, if you're not already following English Shooting on Facebook, go and hit that out. And if you're watching this and you're not already subscribed, what are you doing with your lives? Hit the subscribe button. We're only just trying to make the best content possible, only trying to share the sport, get as many people into the sport as possible. And your subscription help with that. It helps with the numbers. It helps reach new people, more people, share the sport far and wide. And of course, while you're at it, you're hitting that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Again, analytics with YouTube. The better the, the analytics in terms of subscribers and likes, the more people that YouTube will show the videos to and we'll be able to... Um, get more people shooting which is what it's all about really uh no current mps in support we would i don't know what i have sort of jumped into the conversation there can you put one pound in the neighbor's jar please gary <laughs> um i do have a little piggy bank actually it's um it's empty so um yes yes i have uh, my own little saving pots with with my name oh it's wrong i need to get a gary one now um but yeah, so yeah, maybe maybe I should have like a little pound jar and then like at the end, the end of a month, donate it all to a charity. So um, yeah, anyway. Was there any, I think there was one more thing. There was, um, there was a, view, a review of the um, Spectre DR by Alcan um, that I put out a while ago. I don't know why I'm telling you this because it's just a massive cock tease basically. Uh, if you saw this video, I'm just trying to bring it up now for you guys. Where is it? Here we go. So the Elcan Spectre DR. Let's bring that up for you all. Transition. Skip the ads. Skip the ads. Uh, intro. I'm sure you're all familiar with this. So that's the uh, the Elcan Spectre DR or DR. Yeah, Spectre DR by Elcan. Uh, if you're in the well if you're in the market for one you were sort of in luck because i got a message before the stream started saying that that exact one uh is available for sale but it sold like literally within like five ten minutes so um but yeah it, it was available but now you're gonna have to go and sp spend i think it's like 1300 pounds for one uh let's get off the yeah there we go and i'm back um so yeah daniel good stream well it's not it's not over yet mate <laughs> but I appreciate it. Uh, need more Connors? Well, fuck you too. What is it? This is English shooting, not Connors shooting yet. Should be Gary shooting. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, Con we are trying to find a way, as I'm getting more familiar with all the settings and everything going on uh, with, with the streaming software, we will eventually reach a point where I can get Connors live streamed in. We tested it in the office the other, other day. And it was successful. I was able to get his beautiful bearded face um, into into the streaming software and, and get it streaming. So, yeah, uh, we we maybe try that next week. Uh, but as soon as sort of lockdown, the the issue is that you know I'm now doing these from home uh, just because it's more more convenient and more consistent. And whilst my home is my um, registered business address, and technically this is work i know it doesn't seem like it sometimes but it is uh it's you know i technically under that justify corners coming in but i really don't want to push my luck hampshire don't need any reason to keep my certificate away so we will be waiting until ordinarily people are allowed in other people's houses and we, we will sort something out or we will find another space somewhere that will be able to do it regularly each week i just I like doing them weekly. I like the regular thing, and you some see you guys seem to be enjoying it as well, which is it was all good. Apart from the baby joke, oh, you know nothing. This was a, this was a very light Gary stream. Well, I'm good. That's Hampshire friendly. Bask approved. What's stopping Northern Ireland residents going to the UK and buying mags? Um, will I from the 
Republic of Ireland still be able to buy mags up north? Um, to be honest, I, I made that video. Uh, I haven't seen any news from that since. The, the best person to follow on all of that it's definitely Mike Lindsay uh, and the uh, the owners' rights cooperative. He's based in Northern Ireland. He's going to know absolutely everything about it. As far as I'm aware, the the law hasn't actually changed. Uh, it's um, as someone's saying the Elkan is closer to two thousand two hundred. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty pretty spicy price. Is it? I swear. Oh yeah, because it's similar in price to the Razor Gen. Um, Razer HD Gen 3 uh, but yeah in terms of Northern Ireland I don't think the law has actually changed it's the implementation and the 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 overall sort of impression of the law that, that the police have uh, or understanding of the law that has been changed so in Northern Ireland you always needed to have a firearm certificate to be able to have the magazines and of course I, th I think you also needed a a reciprocating gun for that magazine on your firearm certificate so that hasn't changed but they are certainly being a lot more strict about it what is new it is of course buying the magazines what they're saying is you're going to have to apply like you would for a variation like you would have to do for a firearm here in the uk to be able to go and buy a magazine if you want to know more about that again there's a, a video recently that's been put out on the channel so go go and check that out um, there's lots more information in there in terms of the the republic of ireland uh, it you have different laws as far as i'm uh, as i'm I'm, a, I'm aware um in in the south of or in in ireland um and you're just going to be in terms of while you're in ireland you'll be restricted by that um but in terms of what's stopping them nothing and as i said actually in the uh, in the video there's loads of places that order online of course i'm not advocating people break the law i'm not advocating people um you know import magazines illegally of course i'm not i was purely making the point of it's quite easy if it's quite easy for people to do so and again, if they're really trying to prevent crime and there's an easy way for criminals to get hold of them, then, well, you know, they're, they're still going to be able to get hold of them, aren't they? So, um, yeah, uh, in terms of you buying the mags up north, again, you won't be able to. Whether or not you have, you know, you, you're bound. It's like basically somebody from America coming over to the UK and saying, you know, oh, and back in America, I don't need a license for this. Well, here, here you do. So while you'll be in Northern Ireland, you will need to abide by their laws. And I, I say in the video again about transporting magazines over to NHTSA. So there's uh, there's NHTSA. It's where the UK PSA has an agreement with for UK PSA members to be able to go over there and shoot handguns. You should not take ha your own magazines on the plane. If you land in Northern Ireland with magazines, even if you have a firearm certificate, you could get into serious trouble. So please, please, please be careful. Don't push it. NHTSA has plenty of magazines. You'll be out. You you won't be wanting for magazines. That's for sure. And you, you know you're um you're just risking getting into a lot of a lot of trouble. Master Samwise, howdy, howdy to you, sir. I'm in the market for a 2.2 semi to go with my Schmeiser. Not a fan of Poly, but I could be convinced. What's your recommendations for a 2.2 semi? I don't want to upgrade much. Um, 15.22. I know you've just said particularly uh, Polymer. 15.22, really? It, like You cannot beat it for the money. Super reliable. Loads of upgrade parts available. <clears throat> Maglo.co.uk. And... It's what some of the best shooters in mini rifle shooters in the UK use. It's well proven and tested and, and reliable. And I've seen shooters move away. So, like, let's say Ben Ducker. Now, he moved away not just because he thought there might be gains to be had with a full mil spec AR 15 in 22 with a conversion, but he wanted to be able to simulate the weight of his 223 semi auto ARs that he has um, outside of the UK for. You know, sort of international three gun and IPSC shooting, so I understand that justification. Unfortunately, he had loads of issues with it, um, and it just well, I say loads of issues. It just wasn't as reliable as the fifteen twenty two, and he 
ended up switching back to the 1522. I think he has gone back. There's been a few tweaks, a few improvements made to his uh, sort of his his mil spec AR. Um, but in, in my opinion, people go for these mil specs and they're just not as reliable. The only exceptions that I I will say to that are anything that Otto waves his magic wand over. So like the um, L one one nine um a 22 i think it is that is a cmmg conversion uh aero position uh, upper and lower ar uh, mil spec of course now that ran flawlessly well i haven't you know i haven't seen tens of thousands of rounds or even thousands of rounds put through one but the time that we had it run flawlessly and also the battle arms developments guns that he built over but builds over at cotswold classic arms are absolutely perfect as well again i believe they're using the cmmg conversion kit so if if you really want that metal if you really want that mil spec go and talk to otto at cotsweld classic arms you can get on con in contact with him via facebook or through his you know the cotsweld classic arms facebook page but honestly you're still going to be looking you know the, the smith western 1522 you can pick up here for 600 pounds the l119 is I think minimum about eleven hundred pounds or a thousand pounds, so almost double straight away. And if you're looking at battle arms, you're going to be looking two thousand pound plus. So it depends how much money you have, really. Uh, but you, you cannot go wrong with fifteen twenty two. I had the same reservations, honestly, about it being uh, polymer, about it being plastic, about it feeling like a little kid's toy. But it is just one of the best little 2-2 ARs you can get out there. And it is, for the most part, mil spec. You can drop in aftermarket triggers. They do sometimes need a little bit of, of fettling. There are upgrade safeties, ambi safeties available. And, you know, the the CMMG conversions and people that end up building 2-2 AR, mil spec 2-2 ARs, end up using the 1522 magazines because they are just so reliable sometimes difficult to get hold uh, hold of in the uk but still super super uh, reliable and that's why so many people seem to 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 use them uh, and martin straw sure even uh callum do you and connor's ever forget who you are working for um or cross loyalties which uh, with English shooting versus Magload versus Blue Field Sports. Lots of balls to juggles. We're just very good at juggling balls. Um, it is on our service list. There is a small fee, uh, but we enjoy, enjoy it so much we try to keep the cost down. Um, not, not, I have to say, not really. Um, we, I am stepping away, um, actually, from uh, Blue Field Sports. I haven't talked about it yet on the, the channel uh, might make a, a, a video sort of going into depth on it. I am stepping away from Bluefield Sports and stepping away uh, from Gunroom TV. That's mainly because Magload um, and English Shooting actually uh, are getting busier and busier. Uh, the stats for the channel have like exploded after uh, over the last like couple of months. Um, the streams are, are doing much better. Um, I'm even thinking of doing more than one a week, maybe even going over onto Twitch. Um, I just enjoy doing them and certainly during lockdown I'm, I have like naff all else to do in in the evening uh, but I can only do so much and I've, I've sort of shifted my priorities over the uh, over the last couple of years obviously partnered with uh, Bluefield Sports on uh, with English Shooting that, that was like a mutually beneficial uh, arrangement and then co-founded Gumroom TV and Gumroom TV sort of is heading in another direction um, than what sort of I was initially on board for, let's just say. And it's like, well, English shooting shut down. So I was like, okay, well, I still want to make videos for something. And now that English shooting's back and is doing really well and you guys seem to be loving the content, loving the live streams, I, I couldn't keep juggling the balls. And Magload ultimately is, is my main priority. English shooting... Uh, whilst it's I'm obviously able to put more time into it, I'm able to do it effectively full time. As you know, I can dip in and out of Facebook and YouTube as as much as I want. I can film videos as much as I want. It's Magload that pays the bills. So Magload, of course, is the the priority in my life. And um, yeah, with that getting busier, getting bigger, and English shooting getting busier, getting bigger, something had to give. Um, 
and I'm not giving up the channel <laughs> and I I have to focus on what's paying the bills. So um yeah, it to be honest never never really struggled it when you know we were doing, you know, at one point there was, you know, Bluefield Sports, Gumroom TV, Maglode and English Shooting. It's it was just all different environments. You know, if I was doing something for Bluefield Sports, I'm in the Gumroom and then I'm in like Gunroom mode. If I'm doing a, a video for English Shooting, I'm doing a, a video for English Shooting. If you've ever seen I think I've done one video on Gumroom TV, uh, maybe a couple, uh, where I actually present the video. Um, you probably notice my presenting style is a little different, a little bit more formal, a little bit more um, you know, professional, let's just say, um, because that's what Gumroom TV is. Eng English shooting is, is a hobby, is a side thing. It is ultimately me just chatting shit, uh, whereas Gumroom TV is, is more of a professional um, video production and, and sort of professional content um so you know i i just had different modes i went into and with with magload you know when i'm de when i'm like i've got my magload cap on it's usually at a show and then it's just focusing about magload what what would get what would get hard is like being at a show and having like a magload stand but then i'd be going and filming for gtv or if we we're not even if we're not if we don't have a magload stand at the show having to go round um, and get still get content for English shooting and Gumroom TV and also go and speak to the industry about things to do with Magload. That's probably the breaking points um, were the shows, which I absolutely love. And, um, and actually, that's a bit of shooting news. Uh, the British shooting show, unfortunately, has been postponed until next year. It's not going to happen this year, which is a real shame because I absolutely love the shows. Those were like the, the busiest two days of my life. Um, it was the, the British shooting show... Um, last year and the year before it was just non-stop because we've got priorities for Magload, we've got priorities for English Shooting, got priorities for Gumroom TV and in between all of that I like to meet you guys, have a chat, see if, you know people that I haven't seen in a, in a long time so not enough hours in the day when it comes to the shooting shows um, but I've enjoyed absolutely every second of it um, you know I'm with you know Magload and English Shooting is still you know, based by Bluefield Sports so you know it's there's still a relationship there we'll, we'll see where it goes in the future at the moment my, my time has to focus on on magload and english shooting um so a little bit more simpler uh for me uh if you can have a, an fac you can own a gun hmm? that's a general statement i guess um <laughs> has anyone mentioned fac air weapons um no, because they're not weapon weapons because they're not intended to be used as weapons. They're the sporting equipment. Um, just that's just the PC bit out of the way. But you've got uh, basically if you've got an air gun that's over twelve foot pounds, then it needs to go on an FAC. So if the money, if the energy of the projectile has more than twelve foot pounds um, worth of energy, and that's a mixture between velocity and weight to get the energy of it. Um, then it has to go on a firearm certificate. So I don't think anyone's mentioned that. If you, unless you were just talking about it, uh, I don't know. Um, what are you guys are you talking? Well, you're sort of having a little conversation uh, amongst yourself. When are the PSG National 2020 videos coming out? There is a video um, available of um, it's sort of like a highlights reel of the British Masters, if that's what you're talking about. Uh, there should be a main commentary video coming out soon. Again, I'm not um, I'm not involved with that anymore. Uh, so it's uh, that that's a Gumroom TV thing. Go and go and check that out. Um, you can go and drop them uh, a message. Daniel S. Now is ES is going to have more content. Are we going to have have Are we going to have a bro date down the range? Yes, yes, Daniel. I've told you I'm up for as soon as we can. As long as we're not breaking any uh, covid rules we will most definitely go and hit up the range and we will film as much content uh, as possible is there a 10 millimeter glock lvp no uh, so for a semi-auto you can only have 2-2 rim fire that's why all of the lvp semi-autos are 2-2 are lr technically you can have a 2-2 wmr um yes yep yeah, um but no one's been brave enough yet but there's unless it was a straight pull uh, unless you were manually actuating the the round each time, you're not going to be able to get a 10 mil 10 mil Glock LBP. Unfortunately, it's all two two uh, LR. 
Arias need to drag you out to IWA when it happens. Yeah, I, I admittedly, I've never been to IWA. I've never been to SHOT Show. I will tick those off the bucket list. Obviously, with COVID, it might be another year or so, but we will see. I will end up going to both of them, and I'm, of course, going to film absolutely everything. I miss the shooting shows. Great way to catch up on all the latest hardware on the market. It, it, for me, again, it's more the... Uh, the sh the social side of it that's what I absolutely loved seeing people we haven't seen bumping into you know people meeting new people certainly meeting sort of viewers and subscribers of the channel absolutely um, you know in, in, you know enjoy that side of it the new products like where we're based in the industry we sort of already know what's coming out <laughs> and are usually sort um, sworn to to secrecy when when it comes to to that. Uh, but yeah, I, I absolutely love the shooting shows. The British shooting show is is one of the biggest, uh, so it's a shame. Hopefully, with the Northern shooting show and Target shooting show being later in the year, something will um, still go ahead. Maybe you know, with the vaccines being pumped out, we will have some shows which will which will be good. Open invite. We we do need to have an English shooting range day at some point. I've been threatening it for years. We will um, we will absolutely have to uh, do it. Sinner 2004, where did your comment go? I don't know. Uh, or AKA Simon. Uh, see, I do know what your name is. Delta. Um, uh, nothing's been flagged up. Perhaps it didn't go. Just put it again, Simon, and I'll, if it's a question, I'll try and answer it. Unless you're just trying to abuse me, then I might have just deleted it. Um. <laughs> it's about time somebody developed a 223 rimfire cartridge it's been talked about many many times unfortunately as far as i as the law is worded a 223 would actually still be in violation it has to be a 22 rimfire uh, but there's no there's nothing stopping you you know from making effectively a 223 just maybe slightly under under size an open range day would be great yeah or perhaps i need to like hit up like a proper shooting round like a, a clay pigeon um uh, you know clay pigeon shooting thingamabob or kfc um clay pigeon shooting thingamabob oh it's getting late i'm getting tired and i need a wee um clay pigeon ground a clay pigeon shooting ground what clay ground that's it that's what i was looking for got there in the end oh it's been a long day um, maybe seven side, maybe seven side would be up for doing that, or getting KFC to, to try and you know sort something out so that we could have a like an official English shooting like sort of meet and greet range day. That would be absolutely awesome. Get corners down, get get the whole crew down there, um, make a day of it. That would be um, absolutely awesome. Range day and pig roast. Now that sounds like a great. Now that's a great idea. I have to agree with you, um, Richards. Uh, thanks for thanks for joining. I don't know. How long you've been here? Um, oh no, I've seen a couple of see a couple of other messages. Thanks for joining. Uh, as always, Clay's followed by a hog roast. Yeah, um, absolutely. That sounds sounds good. Put the beer down. This is my only one of the evening. All right, it's just I'm tired and hungry and thirsty and need a wee. Now you just want a KFC. No, no, no. You can't. You can't insinuate any way, shape, or form that. Kentucky Firearms Club is in any way associated with uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. You will receive a cease and desist letter, I can assure you. Um, I, I am sort of tempted to show you it. Uh, it. It did get put in the Discord. Again, another reason why you should just go in there. I've been dropping some incredible photos and, and sort of unseen stuff in there. Um, but yes, I did receive a cease and desist letter from Kentucky Fried Chicken. KFC from the Colonel himself um, due to a patch that I put a picture of up on Facebook. Uh, yes, he um, wasn't... They weren't particularly happy about that, let's just say that. Um, don't be mean to, to Kyle, Daniel. He is a uh, he is a mod. He could easily ban you, you know, and, and that would be out of my hands. What a shame. Love you, Daniel. Um... My club just got the Nordic Handgun Championship for 2021. Yeah, piss off, Carl. <laughs> um, well, maybe we're gonna have to, uh, maybe we're gonna have to come out and uh, and film that. Um, Connors and I absolutely loved our time out in Sweden uh, for the Handgun World Shoot. 
handgun world shoot for the rifle world shoot uh, it was the european handgun championships out in serbia but it's an incredible place it was an incredibly long drive 27 28 hours in a van non-stop couple of mcdonald's breaks as you would uh, but we would be absolutely raring to do it again and we've also got um you know re, re bef- this was after we went out to the worlds but maglode now sponsors um the current shotgun world champion um so you know he's over in finland so he's and he's also Finnish national champion sort of goes with the territory of being world champion uh but he uh yeah we want to go out and film with him um there's also a new shooter that will be coming on to team maglode as well uh i'm not it's nothing's finalized nothing sort of settled on that yet so i won't i won't say anything uh, <clears throat> apart from there is somebody else joining the team um so yeah we, connor's and i want to get out into that neck of the woods at some point and maybe we could combine it uh all within um and uh and yeah see this summer no dates yet we well it's work so we can travel for work so we we might be able to do it bans him bans him now don't you mean ban What channel is the KFC cease and desist letter on? Uh, this one. <laughs> um, screw it. I'll, I'll bring it up. Because I, it wasn't like a confidentiality thing. Let's see if I can find it. Just just if you don't believe me. Uh, I've forgotten where I put it. Oh, I'm getting I'm getting messaged. It's probably someone going, no, don't do it. Um where is it? Where did I put it? Let's just go for it. Let's see. Um oh it's gonna be in my emails. Let me let me find it. Um, it's going to be here somewhere. Here we go. Found it. Let's bring up this absolute beauty. So I'm going to try and make sure I don't give out like any of their details and I don't show any of their logos because otherwise I'll get another one. Display capture. Let's bring that up. Is that good enough? Oh, that's logos. Oh, let's zoom that in a little bit. Uh, I can't get it exactly. There we go. Here we go. Here is my um, cease and desist from the colonel, uh, the colonel himself. Um, so basically, what this was all over was um, Kentucky Firearms Club, and obviously, I can't show you the picture because I'd get another letter. Uh, Kentucky Firearms Club did an an adopt like a, a slightly altered let's say uh, version of the kfc logo um and obviously made fun of the fact that they are kfc kentucky firearms club and there's kfc kentucky fried chicken and all i did was post a picture of that patch and on on the english shooting facebook page and they um they didn't take very kindly to it and you know to be fair at the end of the day if someone started like ripping off the english shooting logo i wouldn't be particularly happy about it they're well within their rights to do that and there was no further action taken and i'm still a fan of kfc still frequent there r- regularly um so yeah, i'm sure you can tell that have i ever been to finland um might have been no i don't think i have we drove through Denmark I think it was to get to um to get to Sweden maybe even went through a little bit of Norway maybe uh, but Finland I don't think to, I don't think so but it's um it's it's a beautiful part of the world the whole the whole that whole area um of the world is just absolutely stunning uh, and and I, we again we really enjoyed the the visit there Imagine getting a cease and desist from showing a cease and desist. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't put it past them. Going to make a porta potty rental company, English Shitting. Well, there's English Shoeing now, if uh, if any of you saw the previous thumbnail that I put up. Um, 
but yeah, uh, that was just pretty much it. I got, I got a cease and desist from uh, KFC. Someone said I should frame it and hang it up on the wall. I think that's a fantastic suggestion. I will probably get around to doing that at, at some point. Um, oh yeah, a bit of uh, a bit of news as well, uh, and I'll get this up on the screen. This is probably the last bit, sort of, uh, sort of talk about. Uh, if there's any other sort of questions or any topics you want to talk about, then please, please do drop them in now. Let's find it and I'll, I'll share it to you. So, um, Ely Hawk, these are the, not to be confused with Ely Ammunition, these are the guys that make the cartridges, uh, very well known within the UK and, and abroad. They've been having a little bit of issues. So, they've, they're known for their um, Pro Eco Wad, which is basically a dissolvable um dissolvable wad um and it's it's eco-friendly let's bring this up unfortunately um some something that many people sort of feared um they're clumping up uh now there's various safety issues with these this is a, a video done by shoot straight limited um basically rain like raising the safety concerns if you want to see the full video then go and um check them out uh, it's doing the rounds at the moment but they've got various evidence of the shot clumping up and obviously that's not what you want in a cartridge and it's basically i didn't know this but connor's did the the what they're using for these eco wads are uh pvc pvc p no p pva pva that's it not pvc it's not it's not some plumbing pipe um pva as in pva glue now i think what they advertise it as is that these are completely like sealed cartridges so water can't possibly get in there but what you can see there is that the water's getting in it's you know pva the reason that they use it in schools is that it's easily washable it's dissolving the cartridge it's sort of doing its job in terms of being biodegradable but then it's clumping up and causing these massive clumps so that's something to be aware of and certainly if you do have some eco wood cartridges i would highly recommend that you give them a bit of a test, make sure that they're, they're working okay, um, and to also then store them somewhere dry. Um, you know, even humidity can do that, and it's not, it's not that those cartridges have got wet or actually damp, it's just general humidity within the, within the air. So not what you want to see, um, especially with all this stuff going around with, you know, in terms of lead and Bass wanting us to move away from lead and, and move away from plastic, certainly. Uh, it's, it's not a good sort of step in the right direction. Um, if I'm going to be uh, completely honest, but I'm sure Ely are on it. I'm sure they're going to, to fix it up. You know, at the end of the day, I, uh, the cartridge that I've been using for the last, I think, almost two years is actually the Alpha Elite from uh, from Ely Hawk. They are the first UK cartridge manufacturers to make a practical, dedicated round. They listen to a lot of feedback, um, not just from myself, but also uh, Connor's. Uh, his feedback, let's just say, was maybe a little bit more valuable than mine. But they really did listen to the industry. They listened to the consumers and they made a, the first sort of honed in practical. So, you know, I do like the brand. I do like those cartridges. It's what I used at the British Masters. So, you know, that's, you know, I'm not, I don't want to poo poo the, the company entirely. Obviously, it's just a safety issue. Just make sure if you're using those cartridges, maybe cut a couple off uh, in half just to test them out make sure you're not getting any issues and of course i'm sure if you get hold of uh, ely hawk if you've got any concerns they'll be able to um to sort those out and and sort of help you out alberto i would need a picture of said patch to confirm um no no i'm not doing it no kfc lawyers are a lot better than mine and certainly better well uh, certainly better funded just keep the facial hair, it hides the chins. Yep, why do you think I grew a beard? It's brilliant, you can put on weight and no one really notices. You all notice, don't you? Um, but yeah, um, before I go, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. I am going to wrap it up there. It's been a fantastic stream. I've really enjoyed it. I hope you guys have. Uh, we've we've broken the record for the for the English shooting stream, which can't be a bad thing. Um, so if you are one of these new people coming and finding the stream, please do make sure you subscribe. We do this every single week, um, half ten, uh, half ten, half seven UK time on a Thursday. I am looking to expand the more. I am looking to put more content out on the channel um, as we can. Uh, don't look at the memes channel then. Okay then um 
we are you know i am looking to grow the channel more and more and you know we're getting more subscribers more people viewing more people watching um, and of course that is literally down to you guys um so yeah any support is appreciated any likes any subscribes any shares um and it will probably be next week at half uh, seven um drink some more thanks for streaming drink some more beers oh i will um well, i think i've only got one more our christmas stash is gone um but but there we go again a big thank you everyone for for joining the stream and and chatting if you need to get hold of me for any reason in in the meantime check out the the contact page you can get me on facebook on on youtube um through email wh whatever chosen media but it's been um absolutely awesome really appreciate the support really appreciate you guys um tuning in i'm actually now going to head over to the uk um discord um server and while i'm at it i'll just put a little link um oh it's right here um so i'm literally just going to go for a wee grab a beer and then i'll be on the discord if you want to come in and chat so go and check out um, the discord but yeah again really appreciate it guys make sure you like and subscribe before you uh, leave and yeah there'll be a video out in the next few days and of course there will be another live stream next week same place same time on english shooting so as always guys i hope to see you soon <laughs>